What's up guys? Anyone in my Discord server knows just how much I hate Revan mirror matches and I'm sure many of you feel the same way. Well, I've actually stumbled across a team today which seems to alleviate most of those problems. So I hope you guys enjoy this video because it's a team that I'm going to be building for this single purpose. Okay, firstly, we're going to cover mods to show you this is not a straw man team. This isn't god modded, but at 305 speed, it is up there. It's not difficult to simply scale these numbers to calculate where you'll need to be. Yoda with plus 119 speed and special offense at a solid 6,459. Alright, Jolie is up next and the most important stat for him is obviously health. And as you can see, it's right at the top end with 51,000 plus 118 from speed. Next up, General Kenobi. Got 84,000 protection and 108 from speed mods. And up last, we have Bastila. You can see she's got a really decent health pool and 111 speed as well. So it's very, very solid modding. In fact, outside of Revan with an extra bit of speed and Yoda with a few hundred more offense, this really is a respectable mod set that would compete in most shards. I mean, my main account isn't anywhere near as good as this and it makes top 20 without refreshes on an October 2016 shard, so this is pretty decent. Right, so Mobile Gamer has set up the team for me to film against and it's time to show you what mods I'm running. As you can see, I've purposely butchered my Revan. No arrow at all. Speed bonus dead, just a tiny 97 speed. If you're scratching your head and you're thinking that I'm insane, well, I'll explain. It's because I'm showcasing how your Revan can be quite significantly behind your opponents. Not even an offense arrow is needed. I initially filmed this with my Revan at 303 speed, just two behind mobile, so I could still go second, but it was still just too easy. Doing this and dropping to just 257 should, in theory, allow mobile's team to get ahead and eat me alive. But if that was the case, then this video wouldn't even exist. So enough of the teasing, let's just quickly go through the rest of their mods. My Grandmaster Yoda, considerably slow of just plus 60 speed. Uh, and his special, I'm slightly stronger at 6600. I used an offense arrow, same with the triangle, same with the cross. All right, now we go to Joe Lee. You can see I'm right up there in health as well. I'm still weaker than mobile and I'm considerably slower than he is at just plus 89. Next up, we'll get Mrs. Revan. The health pool's decent, not as high as mobiles, and only plus 97 on speed. And lastly, the secret weapon, Plo Koon. This is the guy that I do actually try to make fast. The faster he is, the better. We got him at plus 117. The rest of his stats aren't too important, although I really do try and get as much protection on him as I can. His triangle, his cross, and his circle are all protection, because the longer he's alive, the more turn meter we're going to gain. Honestly, two defense mods instead of the potency ones are probably a better shout because there's so much tenacity around that you're just not really going to land that offense down debuff anyway. But let's get straight into a battle now. It doesn't matter who they mark, I've won this battle 14 times in a row during this filming and they've marked everybody at least once. But we're going to mark Yoda in response and make sure Revan saves him. Alright, there we go, that's been sorted. Both Revan and Yoda's TM is drained, but this is where Plo shines. His second special will give everyone 50% turn meter and defense up. Now, whether you're in the group who kills Yoda once and then Joe Lee before mopping up, or prefer to kill Yoda, force Joe Lee to revive him, and then gamble on being able to kill Yoda, Revan, and Joe Lee before another revive, that's up to you. Personally, I prefer this method as no matter how many times I tested it, we didn't lose a single battle despite being outmodded by every member of Mobile's team. I'll drop Yoda once and then wear him down to finish him with an AoE attack while I'm dealing with another target. As soon as I can, I'll pass strategic advantage to Yoda so we can't be countered, then I can spam any attacks and steal buffs without any risk. I tend to leave it there unless a solid opportunity opens up or unless Jolie is already gone. Plo also brings a little extra to the team. Along with the TM boost, he can dispel one buff with his basic attack and has a 50% chance to remove all of them. Very handy for controlling Kenobi or Yoda. We'll just chip at Jolie now until Revan can mark him. 
All right, Yoda can get in an extra attack now as he's got strategic advantage and won't be countered. Then he's, this is one of those opportunities actually where we can pass this back to Riven, get an extra attack in, get the buffs off. All right, let's go for a stun, I think. Perfect. All right, let's get some more turn meter to Yoda. We'll go for an AoE here because I want to hit that Yoda as well, get a bit more damage. I don't really care what we count. We've got plenty of health. Right, now let's pass counter to our team because they have their Revan's Focus coming up and we will then counter their Joe Lee. Perfect. It's quite ideal that they actually went and marked Plo because he's got so much protection. He's actually quite hard to wear down. His kit is also built around boosting his defense. So they'll have fun with that. We can just chop up the rest of the team waiting to mark Revan. If you're able to count their Revan, your life will be a lot easier regarding the timing, but it's not necessary. You know from my live streams, I generally don't bother being moved perfect unless I need to, because a win is a win. Right, let's pass this back to Yoda. Wow, we don't even need to mark Revan. So I guess we'll just do it on Yoda to make sure he dies a little quicker. Let's bring Ploy back. Goodbye buffs, and finish. All right, we've got plenty of time left on the clock, so we can just press auto, but I'll wrap it up and see if Plo can get the kill. All right, let's pass these buffs around. Let's give that to Revan. All right, we'll get all the buffs off. Ah, oh, screw it. We'll, we'll just finish it with Yoda. And there you go. A nice, easy win. No uncomfortable moments, even while significantly slower. We're not getting tied up with Kenobi thanks to Plo, and we're able to pass big chunks of turn meter to actually give us the speed advantage, despite being the slower team. Let's get straight back in to prove this is by no means a 1 in 20 result. This genuinely hasn't lost even once, and I have actually begun gearing my own Plo after this testing. Right, they've marked Revan this time, which is usually a worst case scenario, as it increases the cooldown on our own direct focus. On top of being the slower team, this should give us a steep mountain to climb. Alright, we're going to pass strategic advantage to Yoda, start doing some damage. Okay, let's mark there Yoda as before. And now boost our Revan in front of mobiles with Plo while maxing out the turn meter on everybody else. Alright, let's finish off there Yoda. Nice, now we can actually kill Joe Lee once we finish dealing with this. Let's wear him down nicely. All right, AoE attack, pass the turn meter. Yoda survived this time, but no worries. Okay, I could hit everyone, but it looks like Yoda's got foresight anyway, so let's just pass these buffs. All right, Plo can dispel Kenobi again, and we can get right onto Joe Lee, finally. All right, gradually wear him down. Let's remove his buffs. Okay, Kenobi wants to taunt. We'll deal with that in a second. Oh, wow. He actually let us down. Never mind. We got direct focus anyway. That's quite a rarity, actually. The plow failed us. Yeah, let's finish off Jolie. That's what I mean about just keeping it for the optimal time. Passing it back and forward with no rhyme or reason will often end up punishing you when you run out of buffs and now you can't steal them without getting countered. Okay, they've killed our plow again. We'll bring him back in a second. Let's get right onto Revan while Kenobi's silent. All right, plow will be back now. Let's pass this back to Yoda. And Kenobi's gone. Oh, they're really trying to keep Plo out of the battle this time. Alright, let's go for this. And Revan's finished. Perfect. I mean, this point, again, you can just hit auto, really. If you know the enemy doesn't have either Bastila's buffs or Yoda's steel lined up, calling Plo to assist can actually really hurt the enemy team, particularly when he dispels everything. It's optional of course, I imagine many will still call Yoda as I've been doing, but it's another tool in the bag of this lineup. Right, let's just quickly finish Bastila off now. Oh, 
Hopefully, maybe one more big attack should do the job. Ah, that'll do it. Perfect. Another easy, easy victory. So there you have it, guys. Plo Koon in action. Defensively, it doesn't perform any worse than the Hermit Yoda team. It performs significantly better than the Ezra version. And, I mean, the Kenobi ones aren't exactly holding anymore because there's so many Revens on everybody's shard. I mean, this team itself is beating significantly stronger teams. One upside, no Zetas required. Only the Omegas on the basic and the second special are needed. You don't even need to use purple mats on the first special. Plo is also quite handy for modes like Grand Arena and Territory Wars because he's kind of got a kit that's optimal to take down the Night Sisters. Add in the fact he's not too difficult to gear, doesn't need a Zeta and only needs two of his moves Omega, it's not too bad of an investment overall. But that's it for this video guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please like and subscribe. Feel free to leave me a comment below. I've got a Discord server you can join. I've got a Patreon if you wish to support me any further. And until next time guys, we out of here.